Okay, you've finished your map and it's looking really good in ArcGIS, much better than what I have on display here. The next step is to export it as an AI file and open it up in Adobe Illustrator. So let me show you how that works. Once you've exported it, you got a file, open, navigate, and you want to look for a .ai file. Now one thing I haven't mentioned in class that's very powerful about Adobe Illustrator is it opens more than just AI files. It also opens EPS files, which is a common vector format exported by many programs, and PDFs. If you open a PDF and it has vector art in it, you can edit a PDF just like you can an Illustrator file uh, with a few caveats. And that's really cool if you're exporting graphs, let's say that you made in SPSS or in R, the statistics program. You can, if you print them as PDFs, you can open them up in Illustrator and totally make them super stylized and, I don't know, downright sexy. All right, so let's open the AI file I have here, and you'll often see this there. Actually, you'll see it anytime you're opening an AI file exported from an ArcMap. Basically, ArcMap is exporting an AI file that was... It might have been modern in around 2000, so it's an ancient version of AI, which is one reason, as you'll see, it's kind of clumsy. One reason for this, presumably, is that Esri doesn't really want you using Illustrator. They'd rather you just use Esri. I don't know the true reason, though. Long story short, you need to update the text or nothing will show up. And it's normally what you do when you see a dialog is you just automatically hit OK. If you do that, you're not going to have any labels, no text, just these ugly boxes. So don't do that. Instead, hit update. Now, what it's going to say is, hey, um, yours probably won't say this, but because I'm on a Mac and I'm running ArcGIS in the Windows partition, um, it can't find this font that basically the city symbol, the circle, is a font symbol, and I don't have Esri fonts installed on my Mac. They're only installed in Windows, so it can't find it. However, if you used a type that the computer you're on does not have, you'll get something like this. And basically here you have the option to substitute, let's say that you used uh, uh, Berlin or something, Berlin font, and you go home and you open up the same map on your computer, and your computer doesn't have the Berlin typeface um, installed. Well then, uh, you can pick a different one here. I'm not going to bother because I'm, I'm not too worried, so see where my city should be. I have little exclamation points because it doesn't know which type to use um, in substitute of the Esri type. Not a big deal here, and it'll only be an issue really if you're using a Mac. Um, but, okay, so let's move this around up here. Um, and this is where it gets pretty funky. When you export to a do an AI file from Esri, it packages it very uniquely. Maybe unique is the nice word for it. So as you see here in our Layers panel, we have one layer called Layers. And I'm just going to rename this now Map. If we open this up, inside of here we have every layer that we had in our table of contents in ArcGIS is here. Capitals and big cities, countries. Um, I don't know why I have a bunch of these. Oh, one's the annotated labels, etc., 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 all the way down. We can turn some of these off so that you can not see them, of course, and of course we can turn them on. Now, the thing that confuses people the most, and it still confuses me, is that ArcGIS groups tons of stuff together. So you can group things in, in Illustrator, and in here they, they group, they go overboard on grouping. Moreover, they create clipping masks in every single sublayer. And a clipping mask, as you may recall, is a boundary um, in which you can you can only see what's underneath the clipping mask, nothing outside of it. So instead of cropping the map to the frame line that you exported it with, it instead keeps all the data that was in ArcGIS when you exported it, um, and then just makes clipping masks to hide the stuff that wasn't within your frame line. So what I'm getting at here is we can open any of these. I'm going to lock a few of them. Um, let's do provinces of the Caribbean. If I click on this, 
you'll see that it goes outside of the page, outside of the uh, neat line here. Now, if I open this layer up, you'll see that everything is grouped. If I open this up, you'll see that it's grouped again. If I open this up, you'll see something called a clip group. If I open this up, you'll finally see a clipping path, which is this blue line here. And you'll see all the other paths underneath it. What is this again? Provinces, every province. Um, which is every little pro provincial line. So the trick here is whenever you import something, um, in or order to edit something, if it's grouped, you have to double click into it, double click into it, double click into it, double click into it. That's highly annoying. So what you want to do is you want to select one of these groups by clicking on the circle and go to Object, Ungroup. A shortcut is Control shift g Command shift g on a Mac, but Control shift g So let's hit Ungroup. All right, and you'll notice one of the groups disappeared. So let's select this next circle here, this next group circle, and I'm going to hit Control shift g All right, that group disappeared. So with the last clipping group, what you want to do is you want to select on the clipping path, highlight it, and hit, or not highlight it, select it, and hit Delete. When you do this, you'll see that the boundaries that went outside of that clipping path are now visible. If we had all the provincial boundaries in the entire world and hadn't cropped it in ArcGIS to the um, extent of the data frame, we would have every boundary in the world right now. It would be overflowing Illustrator. So make sure that you crop your data, export your data um, to the extent of the data frame in ArcGIS. Okay, so we've got these boundaries that go over the edge. Not a big deal, because now what we can do is that nothing's grouped. We can go right in and start selecting um, different data sets. Um, if it's grouped like this is, when it's grouped, when you select on one, it, um, it selects them all. Make sure that you just hit Control-Shift-G and ungroup them, and that'll make it so that you can select individual ones. So the provincial boundary, provinces boundary is done. Let's lock it, or uh, layer, sorry. Let's do the same thing for the countries of the Caribbean. I'm going to open this, open this, open this. It's just obnoxious. All right. Object on group, control shift G. Object on group, control shift G. Object on group doesn't work with clip group. So what do we do? We just delete the clipping mask. Notice the um, countries that extended beyond the neat line are still there. There's still a group now. Control Shift G. And now our countries are individually selectable. So, yes, it sucks. You have to do this for every layer. Although, if you get Control Shift G down on your keyboard, it takes only moments. Boom. Boom. Select the clipping path, hit delete, and then select the group and, and do that. All right, so that's basically what you have to do, but What's the problem now? Well, of course, the problem is that we've got this ugly looking map here. Oh my gosh. Well, actually, if you look back at the layers, you'll notice that all of these layers, our table of contents from ArcGIS, are in a new layer called that map, that single layer. And what we can do is in here, we can simply go and we can draw a rounded, rounded rectangle. We could even do an ellipse. But we can simply draw a new shape. And notice that the rectangle ends up as the top layer and the map, or the top sub layer in the map layer. We'll give this puppy a white fill, and then we'll go up to the little flow menu here in the layers palette, and hit make clipping mask. And so basically, what we can do is we can go from ArcGIS's however many 18 individual clipping masks with multitudes of groupings for no apparent reason make one clipping mask, lock that layer, and anything outside of this won't be visible. 
So I hope this makes sense. Play around with it. It'll be confounding and confusing at first. But once you have the ability to actually start editing and tweaking colors and stroke widths in this um, in Illustrator, it's extremely, extremely powerful stuff.